Yeah, and we kept seeing all... I feel like so many people keep saying that you're never going to be ready. Mm -hmm. And I just keep seeing that all over the place now that actually going. About like leaving home. Yeah. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. you can't wait till you're ready because you'll never be be ready ready Mm -hmm. or never think you're you're ready. Yeah. So you just have to do it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back or welcome to the Feeding Curiosity podcast. I'm your host, Eric Wenzel. As always, Feeding Curiosity is a podcast that explores the precarity of human experience. Really, just the random occurrences that happen to each of our lives and how we interpret those experiences to live the most fulfilling life that we can. And it's my hope through these conversations that you're going to take away the blueprints to live a more fulfilling life. And with that, everyone, please enjoy today's episode. Today on the podcast, I am joined by two of my returning guests, and closest friends, Jordan Chris and Alex Ivy. And the reason I'm having them on the podcast today was pretty special to me. Jordan and Alex, at the time of this recording, are now living in LA. And this conversation took place roughly three weeks ago as they were packing up to leave and we covered that. But the whole point was, I'm assuming many of you just had a, wait, what? Why would you leave right now? And that's the whole point. Because in the pandemic, the idea of moving sounds insane. But the idea of moving in any point of your life, making a big drastic change, be it a job, be it a relationship, be it moving to a new place. Why now is always the question. And the answer to that should be why not? If you've done all of the research you can and it just feels like the right move and you can make it happen, then make it happen. And that's why the title of this podcast is on taking the leap. I think this is so important. With that, everyone, I really enjoyed this conversation with Jordan and Alex, and I hope you do too. They're some of the most amazing people I've ever met, and I cannot wait to go and visit them out in LA. And with that, everyone... Please enjoy this conversation with Jordan Chris and Alex Ivy. Back. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been even longer for you. I know. It's over been a year for Alex to be on here, I think. Yeah. Because it was longer, right? My voice has been featured many times. times. Oh, like in the distance. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Where Jordan's like, maybe Alex knows that. She'll bring it up. You can just hear it like real faint. On the couch. Yeah. It probably feels weird for you to be actually plugged in because i think yes. like you said we were setting up you don't remember having the actual setup yeah so yeah. that's cool the growth yeah. that happens like right before your eyes but like, don't notice it yeah like this little <laughs> things because it's off it's off center that's cool it's an interesting thing especially like for me because i'm getting to that point where i really want to have a full-on professional room yeah mm-hmm. with all the soundproofing and whatnot like, it'd be nice man. i really have that itch now just mm-hmm. to do the do the professional thing yeah as like professional as i can without going and renting a music studio or something yeah know? but you can it'll be a studio of sorts yeah just not Home for music studio. yeah <laughs> you know what i mean it would do all the same things i think I, yeah i don't think i would skimp i would just yeah make it what it needs to be yeah maybe for podcasting really excited about that that's yeah. like a 2021 cool, thing get a cool setup in there <laughs> deck mm-hmm. it out that, yeah, that would be awesome. You should. It feels like the next step, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's like the next logical step. Yeah. But it's a big step, obviously. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's no, important. You know. I don't know. It's like weird because we're all at that age where it's we're getting our, our legs underneath us. I'm like, what are we going to dedicate our next, I don't know, five to ten years of our life trying mm-hmm. to do or become? Mm-hmm. And that's really why we're talking with this conversation <laughs> yeah. with you guys at your imminent departure in T minus what two days <laughs> technically yes yeah it's less than two days really yeah yeah it's a day and a half really at this point yeah it's crazy <laughs> it's crazy it's crazy to think that tomorrow we'll be able to say tomorrow we're leaving i yeah. bet it right? feels strange because yeah. when covid started it was like you guys were living in the city and it was like yeah we're finally doing it mm-hmm. like we're finally going to the city mm-hmm and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, this place is not great. We're leaving. <laughs> and I was like, lack oh. of it, but... <laughs> I know. And you were like complaining about that for a solid week. Like every other time I'd hear you, it'd be something new. And it was like, these guys dragging. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you think I was complaining, I'm going to pause real quick. And you're going to hear something that we all are familiar with. <laughs> One of the last times I'll do that in person. I know, right? 
here. Like, well, I mean, we'll come back and do sure. it, but in yeah. FaceTime. But, stuff, in, a long, but, but yeah, in a while, right. it won't be like normal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mm-hmm. love that sound. It's honestly half of the fun for me is to do all these conversations and then reconvene with the homies yeah. <laughs> where this all started. Yeah. Never loses that. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, so... Yeah, a lot of complaints. If you thought my complaining was bad about that apartment, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> this I was, one, I dude. I literally didn't think of anything else <laughs> for, like, the whole month. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I, I mean, it's gross. Insane. It's gross. <laughs> yeah. So, for context, I don't know if we talked about it. I don't think we really ever got into it on the podcast. Right? Yeah. Tendentially. It was, like, too, uh, it was too real. <laughs> yeah, right. wanted, You know what I mean? But we moved to the city, and it was funny because we moved in the day before quarantine started. So it whatever, yeah. It was like March 15th or something mm, yeah, like that. Yeah, it was like literally we moved in like Saturday and I think Sunday was when it started. Yeah. So we're wow. like, cool, we moved to the city and now we can't do anything. And everything's <laughs> yeah. closed. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like, okay, well, like whatever. Like in our heads, my birthday is in May. Mm-hmm. I was in March. So I'm like, by May, it'll be fine. And here we are in August. August. <laughs> so it's like, okay, cool. Like I remember specifically saying there's no way it'll go past May. Yeah. I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. Okay, enough about that. <laughs> enough about COVID. But yeah, so that was when we moved in there. And then we started noticing, like, some bugs and stuff. Like, at first it was spiders. Mm-hmm. And, like, whatever, not a big deal. And then that turned into, like, centipedes. And I'm like, these things are disgusting. Like, to the yes. point where we were seeing, like... They were scary monsters. Yeah. <laughs> like, we were only there for, like, five weeks. Yeah. Really? And we seen, like, 20 so of them. two months. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. Two weeks, maybe. We saw, like, 20 of those things. And I'm like, okay, that's a lot. I'm like, if it was, like, a couple here and there or whatever. But I'm like... That's a lot of fucking centipedes, dude. And then we started seeing everyone's favorite thing, the fucking roaches. And that's when we were like, yeah. And then we were like, no, we're done. (laughs) Like that's, (laughs) we're not doing that. Long story short on that, we ended up getting out of the lease because our landlord didn't want to deal with it. I don't know. Maybe we're too like suburban for him or something. (laughs) And we're like, yeah, we're not dealing with it. And he was like, just you can leave. Have a standard? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just because we didn't want to live with yeah. dogs. Mm-hmm. That was too much to ask. So then what happened after that? Because th- yeah. the rest of this is, is yeah. so quick. It's yeah. crazy. It was. So we were like, damn, what do we do? Do we look for another place out here? And we had started to. We were going to look. We actually, did we sign? No, I don't think we signed. But we were going to. really close. Yeah. Correctly. Mm-hmm. But we were going to get a place downtown Chicago because our friends, Paris and Monica, had moved downtown and they like, just do it. And we like, love their apartment. And we're like, yeah, we should do it because we're in Chicago. We'll be close to them. We don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. most places you get won't have that kind of issue. Right. But since it was like, we were one for one in that category. We didn't want to keep shooting, <laughs> you know, somewhere. <laughs> Let's just go somewhere. Use a bad know taste for, in your mouth, right? Yeah, now. yeah. And who wants to deal with that? It's just stressful and. No one wants to deal with that, you know what I mean? So, yeah, so we were going to go downtown, and you want to tell that part? Or should I keep going? Keep going. Okay, I don't know how to (laughs) just be the one talking. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, it was, was, we were just, let's just look and see what it is in L.A. Because in our heads at the time, we're like, we'll do the downtown Chicago for a year, maybe two, Mm -hmm. save up, and then go to um, L.A. And uh, we were just like, let's just look and see. And it was like the same price, you know what I mean? Like that's just so, about. That's so surprising to me. Yeah. Like you, when you think L.A., I think so start crazy. either starving artists and you're barely making ends meet, mm-hmm. or you just can't do it unless you already like, yeah and established it, yeah. or something, you know? Yeah, and don't get me wrong, it's expensive. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It's like stupid expensive, but in terms of like downtown Chicago versus downtown L.A., it's like comparable. really comparable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like maybe a hundred or so here or there, either way. So we're like. Should we do it? This is going to be the easiest chance because we're not paying rent now. It's easier to save. Like, we're not tied down anywhere. We don't have much stuff because it's not like we're furnishing a place and have more to carry. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, it, like we just talked about it. Agreed, really. I, I think this makes the most sense. Yeah. <laughs> if we're going to do it, then... It was like a one day decision too. I feel like one day. Wait, really? Yeah, one day we were so set on this one apartment mm-hmm. in downtown, and we just kept checking to see if they had like available units. Mm-hmm. So we were just so set on that one, and then literally the next day I was like, maybe we should just look to see. You just floated it yeah, out there. Yeah, and then literally the next day we we're like, oh, maybe we should just do it. Yeah, let's wow. just do it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. See, so that's interesting to me because I've known, as everyone knows, on the show at least. I've known Jordan for such a long time, since, I don't even know, probably early high school, if not before that, you were like, I'll go to L.A. someday. Mm -hmm. And it was always that someday, like looming ever closer kind of thing. But for you to be the one who says, let's just do it and pull the trigger, that's 
that surprises me because Jordan's usually really good about just hug it, chug it football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, it's funny because he usually pushes me out of my comfort zone. Uh huh. And usually I like to stay like comfortable. Yeah. Every, like I know everything mm -hmm. around me. So then I was like, if we're going to do it, it's probably the best time right now to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. Is there any. I know your background of like why LA, but mm. I want to know where why Alex is drawn to LA because that's usually like a big deal within couples in general is, is where to live, and even agreeing on that is make it or break it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I always wanted to live in California too. Mm -hmm. Ever since I was young, I wanted to go to college there. Oh, it's but just... that never happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then now that I'm getting more into art, mm -hmm. and I want to start doing like murals, and over there, I guess, seems like the best place to do it. Yeah. And, like, there's so many opportunities for everything in L.A. And then also for him screenwriting. It was just, like, the perfect spot for both of us. Yeah. That has everything that we need. Yeah, that makes sense. And so for the, just elaborating on the murals part, because I know you've been doing art for a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't think you got into the mural part of it before. I'm mm -hmm. trying to remember what we talked about. Yeah, it's, like, fairly recent. Yeah. yeah. Like, I haven't honestly known, because I've seen, like, the background and the building up to that point. <laughs> yeah. But I just really got into the street art mm -hmm. theme of art. I don't know. And yeah. then, so that's basically what all my paintings are. I imagine them as murals. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just, so Just scaled down versions of murals, yeah. basically? And it's funny, because every time I show people my paintings... They always say, oh, what's the scale of this? Is this like a wall? Or like, you should wow. do murals. Every time I show someone, they say that. Huh. But yeah, it's just a big <laughs> jump <laughs> to go from doing like smaller canvases to walls, where I feel like that's the struggle of like how to practice scaling so big. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be... Yeah, without having walls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, like, where do you go to practice on walls? Yeah, right. <laughs> that's yeah. that's yeah. a really interesting take. And I think you are hitting on something. I don't know this particularly, but, like, with the weather in California, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you would expect that it would be, you know, more consistent for doing things of that scale. Yeah. yeah. And they have a lot of places that have free walls. Oh, interesting. Where you can go and practice, but mm -hmm. it might get covered up. So oh, you're okay. still, like, practicing and, like, taking pictures of it. Yeah. But they don't really have any place like that in Chicago. But yeah. they have a few in L.A. close to us. That's really interesting. I didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. So it's just like revolving where you just have yeah. large surface areas and you bring all your own stuff and just, mm -hmm. just practice. create. Yeah. Wow. Do That's like, really neat. Do you have to like book time for that or do you just show up and you be like, all right, this is mine for today? I'm actually not sure because I haven't looked into it that far. Mm -hmm. But I've seen because I follow places like that on Instagram mm -hmm. and I see them post like, we always say yes to anyone. Just show us your design and we'll say yes. Oh, so cool. I don't know how that goes mm -hmm. with making an appointment, but I know they'll just let you. Yeah. And they have so many different places, like outside and inside the place, where cool. I'm sure they always have something available for someone to practice. Yeah. They're probably not going to turn anyone away. Mm -hmm. if they, yeah. you're, I'm, to me, it sounds like a membership thing or something like that, where you pay either like for a time slot or mm -hmm. you pay a certain monthly thing to show up when you want to show up yeah. yeah as long as they have wall space like a studio and like go to practice mm -hmm. that's super interesting because mm -hmm. learning about especially large-scale art like that it, it, we're all used to the smaller scale art mm -hmm. artists people who just sketch in their free time and post pictures or even do online drawing and things like that mm -hmm. but to think about painting like that's a whole different yeah scale and, and just medium mm -hmm. for it what was it about painting for you? And I'm curious what kind is you I think you said this to me, acrylic, right? Mm -hmm. So what yeah. was it about that specific? Because I know there's so many different kinds. Yeah, I actually don't know the reasoning why I chose acrylic. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I think it's like the most popular, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe not. I feel like oil paint, there's a lot of different ones, but I just chose acrylic. Mm -hmm. And I just really liked it. I haven't really tried other okay. types of paint yet. Yeah, I was just curious if yeah. you had tried different ones and this is the one that just happened to stick. Yeah. I feel like I think I tried watercolor before, but it's really hard. Mm -hmm. So you really have to get good at that. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like acrylic is best for what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. But also I want to get into spray paint. Okay. But it's hard to practice that again without like bigger walls, canvases <laughs> or something. Because you can't really control that. It's uh, usually, I don't know, mm -hmm. three inches uh, is spray to yeah. make it look. So you can't really do something small. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see how yeah. my art translates with 
spray paint Mm because I'm so used to like a controlled little right tiny precise paintbrush yeah are are all murals spray painted no you can that might be a stupid question no you can paint them I've seen people painting murals (laughs) Mm -hmm. with little paintbrushes Ah! for like little details oh my god (laughs) yeah I think a lot of murals use a combination okay paint and spray paint gotcha but some people probably do like broad strokes and you get like the basics down and then do all the detail work Mm mm-hmm smaller brushes yeah but it'll be a lot to learn because you have to learn how to prime a wall Mm -hmm. learn like the differences between all the spray paints and like the little caps on the spray paints and what they do and it'll be a big that's interesting yeah one of the ones i saw recently i don't know if you've seen it but it's like the acrylic dip where you you spray paint in like water oh yeah and then you dip dip whatever the item is that you want to paint it looks Mm -hmm. so cool i'm like i want to do that so bad (laughs) i showed you that with shoes before people were doing Uh, oh yeah yeah. where they take like the white nikes or something like that and then Mm -hmm. they dip the sides and that is pretty dope yeah yeah i I really like those things i saw people do it with guitars oh shit oh. it looks cool. really neat i'm like what yeah, <laughs> do it with so yours cool. yeah i know <laughs> it'd be so cool to do that stuff yeah. where you just because you the way that it works it's so interesting because the oil floats on top of the water and then you can basically you do different colors in different rings it's almost like tie-dye hmm. but then you can mix it up so you basically pick what colors you want and you can take like a stir rod or something and mix the pattern hmm. and then depending on how you pull it out of it it like adheres that pattern around the object whatever it is that you put in there that's really dope yeah i'm sure that takes practice i feel like it seems like a simple thing but i feel like yeah you have to keep i feel like trying. there's a finesse to it yeah like it looks so simple when you see those like five second videos or whatever be it mm-hmm. a tiktok or something on facebook that pops up but those people have been doing that for a long time that's what i feel like actually doing art more now and painting mm-hmm. more i feel like that's another thing it made me realize Mm -hmm. is that things that i thought would be easy yeah like even just dipping that into the water i look at it differently now and i'm like (laughs) that probably is actually hard yeah Yeah. so i know a lot about how jordan's work ethic with this stuff i'm curious if with the pandemic starting had it changed for you and your hobbies since you were work i mean you were already working from home but had the like painting and an artwork that you've been doing adjust with everything yeah I actually think since quarantine started, I started doing it a lot more. I don't know Mm -hmm. if it relates to quarantine or if it's just because I got more passionate about it Mm -hmm. and like more serious and actually thought that it can be something that I can do for a living. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the quarantine had something to do with it, but I mean, (laughs) it started right when quarantine started. Yes. So so it's hard to pinpoint whether or not that's the root cause or just at the perfect point for you to be like, I think this is the thing I want to be doing. I can totally see that. Like for me, I I find it, I found myself just looking at this quarantine itself as being like, okay, if we can't go and do the normal living things, like hang out at the bars or whatever, Mm -hmm. and just see people as much, might as well try to, do something during this period of time that by the end of it, whenever the end may be, you have something to show for it rather than being like, that was a whole like load of garbage in the last year. Yeah. And I think maybe our group of friends is unique in that way where we we all go out and do something because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. every one of us, be it me, you, Joe, Alex, we're all still going full steam ahead with whatever it is that we really want to be doing. Yeah. And honestly, it's one of the huge things i appreciate about this group of friends Mm -hmm. more than anything just no matter what comes up we just like all right roll with it and keep going (laughs) it's like all right yeah literally it's okay that's presented but now just figure out how to go around it you know what i mean that's all it is i think (laughs) this pandemic is a blessing (laughs) in a weird way yeah yeah, in a way we look because we were talking about how it was like that you can go back even to like college like when we were in college and there was like so many things that just lined up perfectly Mm -hmm. for this to happen now. And I guess you can say that about anything, Mm -hmm. but specifically with Corona, like even for me, it helped me because it limited like distractions. Mm -hmm. Like when it first started and when everything was like, no, you're not like everything shut down outside of to go orders at restaurants and like and grocery even that store. was super limited and so it was like we're just stuck in the house and what is that in the tiktok board in that whatever it is oh, yeah. <laughs> board in the house or yeah. something. Um, stages of boredom yeah so it's like i'm not gonna just not do anything yeah and obviously we already had our things that we are ambitions and stuff so it just allowed for more time with less distractions for that mm-hmm. and it kind of just set that thing in motion so i do think 
like the timing was just perfect. I don't know if Corona was the reason. Yeah. But it like allowed yeah. you to really. I think it would really... have happened anyways, but it's yeah. like this was like jet fuel in the mm-hmm. system that yeah. was like, what do I really care about? And it was like a quote I had earlier today because I was like riding my bike and I've been spending so much time listening to therapists and different like mental health, basically thinking about how to reorient your life, basically, or what it is that's maybe holding you back in your life. And it's like, the one question that kind of hit me was like, what would you do if money wasn't an issue? If you can ask you, if you ask yourself that question and you're doing something that you wouldn't be doing, unless unless it's because you're doing it for the obvious reason of having to live, Mm -hmm. but then you, you should really be finding a reason to do something you really want to be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. What do you think you'd be doing? What would you well, do? Go um, ahead. I feel like I would just like be painting all the time. <laughs> 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 like I would just really be able to focus on that. There's a lot of other things that I would be doing mm-hmm. also. Around that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But if I like didn't have to work for money, mm-hmm. I think I would just paint all the time. <laughs> yeah. And to say I would be, writing and making if money okay so if you say money wasn't an issue say you, you had just enough to like have a roof over your head and like food was, oh like, okay you know what i mean in like that you, sense i was thinking in the sense of i have enough i can do whatever i'd be like i'd be making movies you know right, yeah. making like big yeah budget. like if you were like set millionaire yeah mm-hmm. yeah easily but yeah. if you just didn't have to worry about the basics and you're like okay everything mm-hmm. else you do is just you got Extra. that shit covered then just yeah. keep going do what you want yeah like, right all the time <laughs> you know what i mean and yeah. just get a schedule but it can be a loose schedule, you know what I mean? If you can mm-hmm. work on your passion and stuff like that, like you can have your, you can have the regimented schedule, and I feel like a lot of people need that. Mm-hmm. Or you can have it where it's like, okay, I'll get up at eight, do your morning routine, whatever that is, and then write for four hours, take a break, <laughs> go work out, go run, come yep. back, shower for another four hours, go lift weights, come back, play a video game for two hours, right. write some work, <laughs> go to bed, do it. You know what I mean? It's, you can break it up do however it you want. Again. But it's, I am like, envious of the people who have that Mm -hmm. who can literally just be like this is my ambition passion whatever yeah and they can just do that and just literally (laughs) i'm I'm right there with you because it's like when i started working remote it was like i kind of got this taste of ooh, what would it be like if i could do the thing i really cared about doing for a full eight hour day Mm because i still don't even really know what that's like Mm -hmm. because everything i do on this podcast is like gravy on top of everything else i do yeah and so it's what if i just had a real eight hour day where i could do just anything pertaining to the website meaning reading writing podcasting editing Mm -hmm. all day if i could do that for a week i have no idea what it would look like but i guarantee you it'd be like i'd have so much content in like a week (laughs) (laughs) it would be insane i i don't know and it's that like having that little thing in the back of my head of what if right that little voice yeah in the back of your head that asks asks you of what if you could do that and then it's like slowly but surely you put your put it in a way where you like that what if becomes of oh yeah this is gonna happen now. yeah <laughs> like you have to because <laughs> yeah. i feel like when you have another job and then you're doing this on top of it mm-hmm. it's even though you love doing it and it's your passion it gets tiring because you yeah. still have to do your other job all day and yeah. then you have to find time for this where it's not like this isn't your passion. It's just so tiring after doing that all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have felt this, but like with being home most of the time or the environment not changing, I find myself being more aware of like decision fatigue where it's, you just get worn out from just having to do not really meaningless things, but just a whole bunch of little things that just add up through the day. And it's, I don't really want to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I was mentioning earlier when we went to grab some food, it was like, making worse food decisions because mm-hmm. i'm just like mm-hmm. don't want to think about having to make food or be mm-hmm. like just be lazy and just ah uh, okay i gotta eat something and then you just pick something it doesn't matter what yeah. as long as it's open you're just like whatever i'll go there mm-hmm. but like the idea for me was like getting eating more like healthier food or making meals was like difficult it's just ah, i don't want to do that mm-hmm. did you guys feel that at all yeah, I don't know if, yeah, I guess you can call it, I'd say like mental, I can, I feel mentally drained sometimes. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, <laughs> like I want some sense of normalcy again. And it's a little different because we both already work remote yeah. outside of the pandemic. But 
so like we're we were already home and then it was <laughs> so like it didn't oh, change much for you again. yeah until it was like oh damn now we're we're really home <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean because you can do that and then leave and like a lot of times like when i write best or get most work done is when i'm not at home oh interesting um, so you're like at starbucks or something like that yeah like a brewery like wherever i just usually yeah. i just like to change the scenery but like since that changed at least for a while i don't know it's just like doing the work thing and that's fine and everything but just going through that and then being like okay like starting to have to force yourself to do stuff because you know that's what you should be doing and it's just like at first it's whatever but then as the weeks turn into months and stuff it's just yeah, you get drained you need like a reset yeah. but it's hard to find those resets you know what i mean with everything going on i don't know how you feel but yeah i feel like i would agree with that no yeah, yeah I, I definitely agree with that because there was a solid probably through the december and stuff like that we were all hanging out reg- pretty regularly around the local breweries that probably got hit mostly the hardest because they were mm-hmm. closed for so long Yeah, with not wanting people to congregate there. And those are like the local chill spots for us. It was like, like I, I started missing those moments where it'd be mm-hmm. like, I don't even know, like a Thursday night. And then everyone's, hey, want to go meet up here? And it's like, cool. Yeah, we'll be there. Mm-hmm. And just having the, that little mental break, and especially like post Wednesday and stuff where everything just drags through mm-hmm. <laughs> the end of the week. It's it, like not having that. It's almost like a pressure relief valve. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, too, because I feel like before we had to quarantine, mm-hmm. I really loved being home. Yeah. And, like, I don't really like doing stuff. Like, bef- for a while, even when we lived close to here, I would just work and then go to the gym and then come mm-hmm. home and not really do anything. But now I feel like during quarantine, I'm like, okay, now I want to do something. <laughs> like, you don't notice that yeah. until you don't have the option to do something. Yeah. It's, yeah. For me, I... Sometimes I get in in the moods where I'm like, yeah, I just want to be alone and do whatever and just stay home and like turn off that social battery. Yeah. But I do need that too. You know what I mean? Like I need that, those interactions. So I feel like just more aware of it, like where that limit is. Mm -hmm. Like when we went to, uh, university of Michigan for the float, Mm -hmm. like that was like the most social battery I've used in a long time at that point, uh, in July. And so it was just being more aware of, oh yeah, my limit is very different than it once was mm-hmm. and, and just yeah. feeling that extra drain on the system but also i don't know I mean, you appreciate your routine you have at home then mm-hmm. yeah. when you do do that <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and then you miss you like man i just want my bed <laughs> yeah <laughs> me too <laughs> so it's like yeah. simple things right mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah that's another thing because it's i feel like those kind of interactions it's you got to work at it you know what mm-hmm. i mean and like when you are used to not doing it mm-hmm. so you've been in say like you've been inside every day for the last four months or whatever not because of pandemic necessarily but say you had a big work project is yeah. eight your time whatever you know what i mean just eight your time and then someone say hey i'm having a party and you go you're gonna be like yeah i forgot how to speak to people you, know <laughs> yeah. I mean? like, you get a little rusty yeah and, yeah. Like, yeah. and then like people who do it all the time and they don't even think of it yeah. so i'm like it's something you gotta work at and it's now it's not as bad anymore like stuff's opening up and you can debate whether like that's good or not or less normal it's getting there like yeah. without masks and stuff it's normal in the sense like your everyday carry added a new item which is a mask yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so it's, like, it's not like now especially it's really not that bad but it's still there's still certain levels of normalcy that aren't there yeah and yeah i don't know it, it just it can get draining so i think being aware of those things now is like so important because you realize you can take things like that for granted like how you were saying like I don't like doing it, and then you can't, and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, I have wish. I think it highlights something about the introvert, extro- extrovert thing, and mm-hmm. really shows that it's a spectrum. Mm-hmm. Even if you're mm-hmm. introverted, you still need some sort of right. yeah. <laughs> social interaction, no matter, even if it's just, the, like, less than the average person. Yeah. We're social creatures at the end of the day, and, like, we, yeah. we still need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely. True. Yeah, I don't think, and I'm sure there are, but I'd hesitate to say that there's anyone out there who's completely introverted. Like yeah, 100%. I, mean, I don't yeah. need anyone ever. Yeah, yeah, like a hermit or something. Like I'm sure there's some people out there in the world. Far but in like, between. Yeah, but I'm like, it's not a common thing. No one's completely just like, I don't want to see anyone ever. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that's not, that's not common. A mountain. Yeah, so it's, you need it. It's important. And some people suck. But like for the most part, people are pretty cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, like, you meet cool people and make good relationships. And then well, you never know where they lead. Not to say it as in you're using people, but just make like a, you can be out at randomly and meet someone and they turn into a good friend. Yeah, you know what I mean? And definitely. stuff like that is cool. And then you can find out about people what like makes them tick. Yeah. And then share what makes you tick. And it's just, it's dope. And I think that 
I miss that like randomness of yeah. life. It feels like that randomness of life is like diminished because of this. Yeah. Because yeah. like the odds of you randomly bumping into someone, I don't even know if that's ever gonna happen ever again. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That nomenclature <laughs> might disappear because if you bump into someone, they might spray you with Lysol. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's like that is true though. Because I feel like you know, a lot of people don't randomly do anything now, Not even this. though things are open now. I feel like everything is still planned. Like, I'm gonna go to this restaurant, but yeah. I'm only going because I'm meeting my friends. Like, most people don't just oh. go out, yeah. Not, yeah. not like just meeting someone yeah. there yeah. and you stay way. with the people, yeah. I don't know. It's, sometimes it can be motivating because just talking about the stuff that you're passionate about or that mm-hmm. you're working on. You know what I mean? When you can talk to people about it and like you, they share your excitement and they don't have to because yeah. they don't. It's different when it's someone not, that's not valued, but when it's someone that you've just met, like. Like that random know, thing where you're yeah. just vibing on it. Yeah. And like, they're like, oh. wow, that's so cool. You, you know what I mean? It's, it just, I don't know, it like lights a fire and makes you be like, yeah, that is cool, isn't it? You know what yeah. I mean? Like affirmation, I guess you can call it. But yeah. But it's also you're checking yourself almost because mm-hmm. like. It's not to downplay your friends, but your friends are more likely because they know you so well. They know, oh, yeah, that makes sense or not. Mm -hmm. But if it's some random stranger who you're just meeting and it's you're talking, I don't know, just on the train or something and you just get to talking about something. It's oh, what? This is so cool to hear just a random stranger like care about what it is that you are doing or collectively doing. So it's cool. And that's for that reason, when things are normal, that's why, um, like going where we're going, I think it's just a good place for that. Yeah. Because now we're both of us are surrounded by we can meet a random person. You can be oh I'm a screenwriter, oh, I paint murals, and like the chance of you yeah. meeting someone else who does that, so astronomically higher. <laughs> like it's a lot <laughs> higher there. So that's why I'm like it's funny because we're going out there and you can't really do anything right now. You know what I yeah. mean? It's a little worse off than here. I think there. I think it's getting better. But we're going to go there and essentially be just chilling at home. Yeah. So it's, okay, great, <laughs> we're, we're in L.A. <laughs> like, we're in L.A. to be at I home. I don't know, man, I'd be running all over the place. You know? Yeah, I mean, you know? we're going we're gonna to find ways. <laughs> oh, to... I know you, but the... yeah. Jordan's going to know all the food the, spots. The food spots. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're already looking. I, I'm dabbling with the vegetarian, vegan thing. There's a lot of good places over there. Yeah, like close to us, too. So That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it might be easier, because out here, there's not how many vegan restaurants many. you know of. Yeah, there's, At least not in our area, because there's plenty. Yeah, there's one called Handlebar, and I don't know what neighborhood that is. I might have gone Logan, there. isn't it? I think it might yeah. be. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's really good. Because it's it, really good. Mm, there's one by the Jenny's Ice Cream. I forget. It's by the one of the, the venues you played at years ago. Mm, that's not... Oh, unless there's two locations, a handlebar or something. I don't, I don't know. remember what the name of the place was. I went there once and got like a brief bit be, eh, beef brisket, but it wasn't beef, obviously. But yeah, like, that's cool. If no one would have told me this is know. vegetarian, I would have been like, this is pretty good. Yeah. And I would have just thought it was meat. Yeah. It looked like meat. I'm <laughs> like, okay, it was really good. I was yeah. like barbecue beef. <laughs> yeah, I get creative with this stuff, but it's good. Yeah. I, I want to try it. I just, I just want to see if I want to see if I can do it until I want to see. And we tried it before. Yeah. Briefly. But- I feel like it's easier out there because they have so many better substitutes for things. Like it's just ahead of the curve. Yeah, it's more the culture. More I Mm -hmm. think like it's more common that you're gonna run into people who are like that. So in turn, the places that show up, right? Places are showing up to counter. We're not counter that, but facilitate that. Yeah, and then the it's easier to keep that kind of business. Keep it posted on that for sure because it's one of the things I'm like aware of because it's not like I'm not one of those people who's I need steak. (laughs) <laughs> whatever <laughs> I don't really care that much like yeah. I, I do like good food period you know mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what it is right. but I'm also like I do like to be conscientious of things and I think honestly meat is one of those things that will get shifted in a different way eventually mm-hmm. whether or not you're growing like lab grown meat maybe I don't know about that yet maybe, I just saw some on that it's yeah pretty interesting they, they can might grow be- from cells right yeah, we basically, the idea is that it'd be ethically grown and you're basically just taking raw meat cells from, say, a cow or something mm-hmm. and you take it in, like, in a Petri dish yeah. and then it turns into a, a T-bone or something. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's like, I don't know, I was watching something today and they said that, like, mimics the environment that those cells mm-hmm. would grow in and so it, like, turns into that. They were doing it with, like, chicken. Yeah. And I was like... Yeah, yeah, it would still be real meat, but there would be no like actual animal associated with it. So it'd be ethically grown in a sense. So yeah. nothing is losing its life in quotation. I was literally watching it with like my mouth. I was just like, 
yeah. <laughs> like just dumbfounded. I'm like, what? This has been talked about for a long time, but there's just questions whether or not it's the same nutritional content of yeah, real good, meat. You know what I mean? That's a good point. Um, and it's it is what it is on that end of the spectrum. But for me, it's if you're trying to think of just quality of your health, I do think there's a lot of numbers associated with eating less red meat and more vegetables is just good yeah you know <laughs> yeah yeah I, yeah definitely i think the answer is moderation yes with almost anything i feel like you, i feel like you say that way too many yeah, times yeah, it's yeah. Like, just, <laughs> like you can't overindulge in anything but especially because even just that like the a lot of the reasons where there's, I'm surprised we got to this topic, but <laughs> like, it was crazy. But like you get to the animal cruelty and stuff and some of the stuff is nuts. I haven't watched any of those documentaries because oh, yeah. I'm like, I Food Inc. don't have the stomach for it. He's I don't like think rough. Yeah, I heard it's, I heard it's rough. But if you collectively, let's just speak on like America in general, like yeah, whatever exactly. on the rest of the world, but like America in general, if collectively everyone like, which who knows what that would happen, but say everyone didn't eat meat, but only on Friday. Mm-hmm. And every other day, it's, you no, know, we only eat greens and veggies and stuff. But, like, Friday is steak day, whatever, national steak day. <laughs> there wouldn't the be, best. right? <laughs> I would love, I couldn't wait for Friday. <laughs> um, but there wouldn't be the need for this, like, over mass production and trying to oversimplify and mm-hmm. getting mm-hmm. these things out because it's, like, such a... It's a huge market, right? Yeah, and you got to keep it, you got to keep it going. And mm-hmm. When you have these competitions going on, you got to be the best. Put your stuff out, get it out mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And then you lose... You got your bottom line, so you're like, I don't really care about the animal. I'm trying to, mm-hmm. you know, do your thing. Yeah, That's when what it's when like. You're looking at numbers and bottom line. I think the some of the other decision making things disappear. Yeah. Because it's like, oh wait, you really should think about some of these other things that are not that they're not important, but it's like they lose their value when looking at like revenue gains yeah. and things mm-hmm. like that. It's. It is an interesting thing. Like when you were saying that it triggered for me was like if everyone decided to eat more vegetables or if there's like a three day week where you don't eat Mm. any meat, just imagine like what you'd see in whatever population and like certain diseases. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's another thing. Yeah. Just health in general. Like (laughs) Like would health change like drastically across high risk populations or something like that? That would be my first line of thinking. Yeah. And it's weird too to just like. Food gets people, like, turned into so many knots because it's so cultural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so many, like, different things about food that really make people's decisions around it feel like, oh, my entire family eats this way. And so then you exclude people from their own social environment because they can't eat certain food. Yeah. It's such a tricky thing in that way. I always go back to, like, when I was saying earlier, like, going back to the food thing is if when I know that I'm like slipping up and I know what I need to do to get Mm. back into schedule and it's literally make like simple light like chicken or something make eggs and then I will have like cans of chili and stuff like that and then I'll buy the bag spinach or something Mm -hmm. and then throw that in with the eggs and stuff and just like make these scrambled egg like omelet things it's, they're so simple and it's there's no reason for me not to make them yeah but i like convince myself that i'm too lazy yeah, to right. do it and it really yeah. is simple once you do it okay. i mean what, it's like you, there's no finessing to it it's just yeah. scramble the eggs yeah the, if you pre-cook the meat normally that's what i do i like pre-cook like a pound of meat first and mm-hmm. then i just warm up little sections of it yeah. with the eggs every morning or whatever it's easy that's done <laughs> it's no problem yeah and it's like the best meal you could make yourself like it's high protein kind of high fat depending on if you use like coconut oil or something like that yeah. and then add in as many vegetables as you want and you're right. good right like, yeah we eat out a lot i, know. <laughs> you know, I feel yeah. like it just you fall into a trap of eating out mm-hmm. because it like once you do yeah. it so often and we'll literally buy groceries and still go <laughs> eat out the same day yeah. <laughs> yeah. but i will say i do enjoy it i honestly enjoy it you know what i mean i like trying new things mm-hmm. like when we travel that's oh, one yeah. of the things like i love that part of it yeah and we'll plan the trip around some parts of it like around okay there's a food place here we can do that and so today we'll eat there and then mm-hmm. we'll like, do this and whatever this is cool because it's like good talking points and like, you can engage with people and stuff like that like it's like a social or the area that you're in. yeah i know what these people are into like you yeah. go to Boston, everyone's like, oh, you have to try this place or mm-hmm. whatever. Like in Philly, you have to, this place has the best Philly cheese thing. You know what I mean? It's cool though, because I, I mean, just want to like see. I that's what it's been like going to Chicago with you guys over the last yeah. like, year, probably. We've been just, oh, there's this this place over here and that place over here. Yeah. Like, all the little hidden gems that are amazing, but you don't really hear about. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy it. Be exciting in LA. Mm-hmm. All new places. Yeah, all new. 
the search begins. <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's bad too because they keep saying we don't want to eat out as much. Yeah. But then now moving to LA, we can't. I no. Mean, it's, <laughs> it's part of it. The part of the experience. <laughs> yeah. We actually got to go. It's weird that I know this, but got to go to Wahoos. Wahoos. Yeah. Hmm. It's like a taco place. Mm, so <laughs> say less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But is it like authentic or? It's like a combination. It's like yeah. uh, the Portillos of California in some ways. Oh, sure. Mm. Where it's like their little known specialty. It's only really there. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I went there when I went to Anaheim. It was really good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was they had this cool soup. That was they had like soup and tacos and stuff. It's like a I'm Mexican fusion. Sold. <laughs> it's built <laughs> off. Two of, favorite foods. It's, uh, no. it's, it's built off of uh, like skater culture, skater surfer culture. That's cool. So everything you go in there, it's all BMX and stuff on the walls and stuff. It's pretty dumb. Yeah, it's we'll got check. a cool little vibe, and it should be all over the place in in California. Yeah, so. we'll look. At, we'll definitely. It's definitely not. It's, it's not something else around there. Like it's the yeah. only ones are in that area. Maybe Nevada. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Cool. It's definitely worth trying because it's unique. Yeah, we'll definitely try that. Yeah. But yeah, it's exciting outside of food. Just being <laughs> able to explore. It's got to feel weird for you guys because you guys have lived here in the Midwest. And you were born in California, but mm. you probably don't remember too much yeah. of it. So it's got to be exciting for you guys to actually finally pick where you want to live. Like, it's not, no one else could say no to you. There's, like, anxiety around it, but, like, good. Yeah. You know, it's, like, good anxiety. Because it's unknown. Like, you're like, what I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, (laughs) you can't even, like, really picture how it's going to feel or imagine, rather, how it's going to feel because you're just so used to what you're used to. You know what I mean? We've been here for... You don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. I've like been here for 22 <laughs> years. You know what I mean? And you've been in Illinois your whole life. Like, you've been in. But, yeah. like, even the, I say 22 years, but, like, those five years didn't really do anything. No. So, like, we've all li- literally lived here our whole lives and we're used to it. And even if let's, you're in a spot that you don't know, it's not that far to get to something you're familiar with mm-hmm. or, like, if you need help or something. And we have family out there. But yeah, it's just good. the familiarity of things. Like, it just has this, like, lens of calm around it. And then we're, like, breaking through that somewhere else. And it's, we're going to have to you're figure it out. You're popping the bubble. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> and it's exciting because it's for a purpose. And mm-hmm. it's, like, a calculated risk. It's not just, mm-hmm. like, we say we made the decision in one day. Yeah. But it wasn't like we just woke up and we're like, hey, guess what I want to do? Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? like, you yeah. know? Outside looking in, I guess. It was coming down the road, but it just, like, all of a sudden it made sense to do it now. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I always knew that you guys were going to do it. It's yeah. just a matter of when. Yeah. And that's the thing. And it, it, gee, I think you said this, that I was like, I don't know, maybe we should wait. And you were like, waiting, it's not going to get easier. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. She was like, yeah, I remember you mentioning that a week ago or so. Mm. It was like, what do we got to lose? Mm. I think your dad had mentioned it. Where it's, you always got to, you got a place here if it doesn't work or yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, and we kept seeing all. I feel like so many people keep saying that you're never gonna be ready, mm-hmm. and I just keep seeing that all over the place now that I'm actually going. About like leaving home. Yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's, you can't wait till you're ready because you'll never be ready, be ready mm-hmm. or never think you're re- you're ready. Yeah. So you just have to do it. I love that. It's seriously one of the reasons why I wanted to, do, I'm not just to hear you guys for the last time before mm-hmm. you head out, but like just, I think that's like a huge thing for anybody. It doesn't matter if you're young, old, have a family, don't have a family, like doing anything new isn't going to be easy. Mm-hmm. No matter yeah. how ready you are for it to, <laughs> to happen, there's a lot of growing pains that is associated with all of that. And it's, I don't know, it's seeing you guys go through this thing and then just thinking about what's the direction next. Cause it's, I'm almost two years out of school now. And it's what they, like yeah. that question of what's next is like looming in some way. Mm-hmm. It's what, what's the new thing that's going to happen. And I think like with the pandemic, it makes things feel like it's not that you always had time, like to say we're young in quotes, but it's also now it's who knows how long we have left. Yeah. So what's the point in putting it off to some future sometime yeah. of like, one day I'll do that. Like maybe there isn't the someday anymore. You just got to start planning these things now because yeah. who knows? Because it's even though COVID or this pandemic is new, like the the looming threat of tomorrow is not promised. So yeah. we have to do, if you feel like the need of doing something, then you should be doing that. Whatever 100%. it is, or getting yourself to do that thing that you want to be doing more with your whatever time we have left. Because mm-hmm. like, even if we, like to use a smaller example, like even if I decided to eat perfectly for the rest of my life, I'm like, I'm going to go full vegetarian. I'm just going to maximize how many vitamins and minerals I get every day. I could do everything to the T, 
not mess up, never drink alcohol ever again, and I could still die from some sort of horrible disease that's food related or whatever or mm-hmm. cancer at the end of the day, even though I did everything right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it's might as well just, just roll with it and, and make the most of the situation. Enjoy it. Yeah. Like enjoy your life. <laughs> Especially cause life is going to be a struggle at any point, mm-hmm. no matter how good and you enjoy it as much as you can, there's still going to be hiccups and speed bumps along the way. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what life is. It's weird. Yeah. And it's all about how you get through it. Yeah. We were maybe last week, maybe, but we we're talking. I forgot which one of us brought that up, but we we're talking, and I was like, when I was like, whenever something bad happens or like negative or something, and trying to find the good, like trying to turn it into something good. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think, for example, like so the, for, for the apartment, yeah, perfect example. Okay, you had the apartment bugs, and I was like, man, this sucks, and it's so stressful, and like you, you heard us complaining about it that long, yeah. you know what I mean? It was terrible, but then the good that came out of it is by that happening allowed us to go yeah to la because if yeah. that wouldn't have happened we'd still be there you know what i mean right now and that's not necessarily a bad thing that we would have stayed there yeah but it just opened a door that we wouldn't have had yeah you know what it's I mean? an opportunity presents itself yeah through a negative scenario so it's you can find mm-hmm. the good and the bad yeah. but there was like another thing too you were noticing that every time something bad happened recently, something good came out of it. Mm-hmm. So if you just change your mindset at the time of the bad happening mm-hmm. to think this will bring something good, <laughs> then it won't be as bad in the moment. Yeah. yeah. But trying to make out what I was saying, too, is like trying to make that practical, mm-hmm. trying to be like, how can I make instead of just waiting to see, you know what I mean? Right. Or just being like to a point, you just have to let things happen. Mm-hmm. But like when you notice something like, man, this sucks, whatever it is, just trying to be like okay how can i make this a positive or like how can i make this benefit me in a way and just kind of like reframing the day in those <laughs> situations <laughs> it's it's an interesting thing for me because it, i think it is true especially like it it, it kind of hit me it, it earlier this week was like i don't i don't know what it was about this week that was like like negative nancy or something but mm-hmm. it, it really I saw your post yeah on like, Facebook. i don't know what it was it was like maybe because of the kamala harris being announced as vice president or something because mm-hmm. i kept seeing so much around that yeah and i was just like i was just like annoyed at the world because it's no matter what happens it feels like right now or whoever is in the news or whatever event there's like some sort of spin and it doesn't have to be like news outlets it's just people on facebook even who just look at those events and interpret it and say, oh, they're not good enough because of X, Y, or Z reason, or this is worse because of whatever. Like, it's all this almost like fear mongering to some degree. And I'm just like, why are we hyper focused on looking at the like negativity bias of our species, which I, it served us in the past because we had to, but it just gets so draining for me because there's still a lot of good that's happening. And yes, there is a very big, <laughs> large amount of bad happening. Yeah. But that's always going to be there, though. Yeah, there's always going to be too much to have need to be get done or need to get fixed mm-hmm. for a single human to make a real impact. But you got to let people try it. Like we throw these people out before they even get a chance to make an impact Yeah. and say they weren't perfect to begin with. So they're not going to be good enough now. It's what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. I'm sorry. Yeah, no chance for retribution. I don't believe in that. And depending on what it was. <laughs> yeah. Like something, if you did some heinous and it's like, all right, right. Well. <laughs> you're not going to go and be like, Hitler should get another chance. Yeah. Like, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Too much. But yeah, like, uh, I made a post to the other day saying there's so much like abundant pessimism about mm-hmm. everything. And I'm like, that was what really what spurred my thoughts around this thing, too. I yeah. love that. Yeah. And I was like, just can we be optimistic about something? Like, especially with the VP situation, like mm-hmm. people who say, oh, in her past, it was nine years ago, by the way, nine years ago, we're talking about something nine years ago. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. It's like, why can't people grow? Yeah. She's acknowledged. She said, yeah, I didn't make the best decisions. Mm-hmm. And now you can. Yeah. It's like the shit, the stuff she did was bad. Not you know good. what I mean? It's yeah. Okay. That sucked. But if you can show me one, you're acknowledging it. You're not trying to act like that wasn't it. You're acknowledging it. And then you're saying, yeah, I'm going to do better and make it better. And then actually putting those things into practice. I'm doing better. <laughs> cool. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, why? What's the reason to hate? Like, yeah. if she fucks us up again, okay. Right. You were right. Great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Win. That's probably like why people are so negative is they don't want to wait to the point that someone fucks up again. Yeah. They're just like, want to prevent that from happening. But I feel like that's, like you this, can't really prevent that. So Otherwise, yeah. you're just not going to let anything happen ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, Everyone like, just like stands yeah. like this. Yeah. <laughs> like, might as well put yourself in a freaking cocoon, yeah. that safety bubble. Right. Yeah. And never leave your house because who knows? I don't know. It seems so analogous to that first love that breaks your heart. 
you have that feeling where you're like, I'm never going to love again because I'm not going to go through that. But then give it time. <laughs> Next thing you know, right. look at what you did, bud. <laughs> but you, yeah. it's like you never know if you don't try Yeah. at the end of the day. And I think mm-hmm. like that's what we're... Yeah, cir- that's, that's a good... Cir- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like it's like where we're circling around this whole time. Like you got to... Who you don't know. Like if you preemptively close that option before it's even an option then you can't say it would be bad right. or good mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's perfect <laughs> but really i mean yeah just yeah it is draining very draining but i feel like it's good that we keep a level head mm-hmm. and to be like all right like you can see all that stuff and i don't know if you've noticed this but i'm trying on facebook specifically i've i'll post something and I may say my opinion, but I won't like really engage in a conversation I've had anymore. It. Yeah, wow. and I'm I'm just like I'll let people. Maybe I'll say one thing, and then like, if it keeps going back and forth, I'm like, <laughs> you just know, let it go. yeah, because I'm like I used to be optimistic about Facebook and be like, mm-hmm. no, I think you can have valued conversations. And sometimes you can. Depends on who it is. Yeah, and I think it, you can make that work. But then over time, especially with all the stuff going on now, I'm like, yeah, I don't know, fam. <laughs> I might have yeah. been wrong on that one. It just might not be a thing. So it's like just trying to keep your head above water while everyone, I don't want to say everyone, but like while you see the world sinking, just keep yeah. your head above water and keep the coast in sight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I, yeah. I think it's true. And I, it's not the fault of Facebook. I just don't think the medium really informs the quality of the content that, mm-hmm. or the quality of the discourse that can be had. And yeah. I think most nuanced conversation needs to be done in well conversation Mm -hmm. you can't really get all the points across that you want to get off because i think you lose just a lot of like emotional nuance that is really required to Mm -hmm. really provide a really deep and well thought out idea or nuance you know or just to get your point across to make it known because i feel like people misconstrue like your stance too harshly when you put it out on social media or something. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, you're, you believe as X. Yeah. And it's like, no, okay, stop, please. Let's, mm-hmm. let's roll it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. It's tough, but it, I've seen tons of growth in how you interact with Facebook in general and just, even with you just contending with the other side of ideas. It's not the average person by any means. Yeah. Most people pick a side and just stay there. So these are my people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, and there's nothing wrong with that per se. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, and it's not to say we're better or anything like no, not, like not at there's all. There's no such thing as you're better. It's just right. Like That's how just, you view the world is. Yeah. Some people want to see both sides of the argument. Are people see why their side agrees? It's like a sports fan. Right? Yeah. Like <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's not like that. It's not like a how do you say like a hierarchy? I guess. Yeah. If you do this, you're at the top, and if you do this way, then you're. It's not that. Yeah. But it's just it would be nice if there was more openness. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. At the same time. Because you can be your way and you can be like, I'm democratic and everything I do is falling in line with that. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's how you can live your life, but you don't have to like shit on anyone else. Yeah. For being to, like, any, like a democratic for being opposite than you or whatever, even slightly less than you. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. It doesn't necess- not even necessarily political. Yeah. But like any spectrum. It doesn't, yeah. Like, like someone who doesn't like to eat healthy. Just yeah. Go back there. I don't know. Openness, I think is huge. That people need to, I don't know, just get in more. But it's the way the world is. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like we're growing pains for a new something. I don't know what that something is quite yet, but I feel like this is, and I think you'd said it. It was like what a unified culture was. Like something that Mm. would be like a world culture. Yeah. Because it's like, this is the first time ever that the entire human population has to contend with something that we're all experiencing. It's yeah. not just World War Two or the Great Depression. Yeah. That was in like this COVID-19 thing is happening simultaneously across the entire world. Mm-hmm. And so it's like simultaneously the entire population of the world is learning how to interact with all these new restrictions on itself. Yeah. And there's going to be fumbling in the dark, basically. And, can you fault anyone for it? I don't think you can. No. Like, but it's, yeah, I feel like that's so interesting too because it's one thing that everyone has in common right. and can relate to each other, which is like a really bad thing. Yeah. But it brings everyone together in a sense. Yeah. Not. Because yeah. we all have a common. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, literally. Yeah. And sometimes that's the best way to. You said about teams. No, was it you or Joe? 
someone said they're like when you give someone a goal, like you can take two sides and when you give them a goal to achieve, mm-hmm. they like come together yeah, or something. Joe was talking about that. It's yeah. like military. Like yeah. When you have, you can have two people that don't even really like each other mm-hmm. personally. But when you say you and him are. Give him a task or you're something. A, you're like on the same team or you're given the same goal mm-hmm. to achieve. Like now you have to go take over that hill. Yeah. yeah. You're more likely going to put your differences aside to make sure you overcome that obstacle yeah. as effectively as possible. And I don't know. That's where I land in most of these things. It's like for the first time in a long time, we have this simultaneous threat for all of us. And it's we're all just trying to figure it out. Whatever is best for ourselves and our family. And it's you can't fault people for wanting what's best. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, literally. And I, that's why, again, I love talking to you guys about this stuff and just hearing what you have to say. Because I feel like even though you're one small example of getting up and moving mm-hmm. and what some would consider the worst possible time to go move to a new place. Yeah. Everyone keeps telling us no. Right. Why? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and if you can't wait till it's over, because then what if it's never over? Right. Then we'll be waiting forever. <laughs> exactly. And this is what I mean. Like it's nothing is different per se in the sense that moving now versus moving at any other period of time mm-hmm. was always why now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I sound like you would have said that three years ago. <laughs> like yeah. those same people that are causing you to backpedal and whatever and question your judgment are the same ones that would have done it anyways. Yep. Just got to keep your head above the water. Tune them out. Yep. You know what I mean? It's awesome. I really, yeah. <laughs> it's so cool. And I, I really can't wait to get out there and have a reason to make the time as all of us here are more than familiar with keeping ourselves too busy. Mm-hmm. It's nice to just see all of you guys do your own thing and then have reasons to go visit and get away from the daily grind yeah. to recharge. And so I'm really looking forward to that and just seeing where it takes yeah. you guys. Hell yeah, man. We're excited. Yeah. New chapter, man. Yeah. So. Any other closing ideas or thoughts before we wrap this one up so you guys can get on with the rest of your packing and stuff yeah. like that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> As uh, always. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome leaving home just interesting <laughs> you know what i mean and yeah, seeing the podcast grow and like being here that'll be different um so like i'll be home it's right. not like i'm never coming back <laughs> you know what i mean so i'll be home so like we can do this again but just not hey you want to do a podcast tomorrow <laughs> it's, it's not like, gonna be hey let's do a podcast this week yeah so it's like it's gonna be a little different and adjusting but like it's exciting and i think it heightens like the tribe i guess you can call it just for lack of a better term but you know those relationships is just excited to see where this leads mm-hmm. yeah yeah. yeah, and one last thing, mm-hmm. if anyone's listening to this <laughs> and they want to move somewhere, you're never going to be ready, <laughs> so just do it. <laughs> Got a Nike nailed it. With those <laughs> I'm serious. There's so many people that say the same thing. It's just do it. Yeah. yeah. Literally. Whatever it is, the thing that you're t- thinking right now that you should be doing, you should go do that. Yeah. <laughs> just do it, man. Yep. <laughs> Checks over stripes. <laughs> cool. Well, that's it for this one, everyone. I'm Jordan Alex, safe travels. Thanks, man. And probably the next time I'll hear from you would be yeah. over in the California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We let's now we gotta do it. Beach <laughs> podcast. Yep. Be totally down. down for that. For sure. To always sunny. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>